is Julie Johnson, and today I'd like to talk with you about statistical process control and understanding variation. This is part one of a two-part webinar. Today we're going to talk about variation and causes of variation. The second part of the presentation will address the mechanics of run charts and control charts. They're different measurement approaches for different needs. They're classical statistics, which demonstrate efficacy of procedures or treatments. And there's statistical process control for monitoring performance and quality improvement initiatives. In our work in patient safety and quality improvement, we'll be focusing on statistical process control. SPC is a philosophy, a strategy, and a set of methods for ongoing improvements of systems, processes, and outcomes. It's based on learning through data, and the foundation is in the theory of variation, which is understanding common and special cause variation. The aim of SPC is to identify sustainability of a process over time by distinguishing the different types of variation, to identify appropriate action for improving a process, and to identify capability of a process in meeting targets. W. Edwards Deming, one of the fathers of quality improvement, said, if I had to reduce my message for management to just a few words, I'd say it all had to do with reducing variation. There are two types of variation. There's common cause variation and there's special cause variation. We're going to talk about these one at a time. Common cause variation is also known as random or assignable variation. It's inherent in the design of the process, it has a consistent pattern, which you can start to recognize when you look at your data over time using either a run chart or a control chart. And the variation is due to constant, regular, or ordinary causes. What's important to understand here is that common cause variation results in a stable process that is predictable. The process is in control. Special cause variation is also known as non-random or assignable variation is due to irregular or unnatural causes that are not always inherent in the design of the process. This results in an unstable process that is not predictable. The process is out of control. Let's use a simple example. Let's say that I want to understand how long it takes me to get to work every day. So I put together this chart that's shown here, and it shows my journey to work and the minutes it takes me to get there, and I'm looking at my data over time on consecutive days. Each day, the time varies just a little bit, but it's really around about 85 or 90 minutes to get to work every day, except on some days it might take longer because perhaps there's an accident on the highway. Or some days it may not take as long because it could be school holidays and there aren't as many cars on the road. Or perhaps I have a flat tire and that would increase the amount of time to get to work. Or I could be stopped by police for speeding. Or let's say I really wanted to improve the process and I borrow a helicopter and my time to get to work would only be a few minutes. So if you look at my average journey over time, it varies between, let's say, 20 minutes to get to work on the day I borrowed a helicopter and almost 120 minutes when I was stopped by police for speeding. So this is showing how data varies over time. So there's some things we need to understand about variation. Common cause variation doesn't mean that it's good variation. It only means that the process is stable and predictable. Special cause variation, we don't want to confuse for bad variation. You could have a special cause that represents a very good results. For example, a low turnaround time and you'd want to be able to reproduce that process. Special cause merely means that the process is unstable and unpredictable, and we need to pay attention to the process to understand what part of it needs to be fixed. So let's use another example. What would you say about a patient whose blood pressure averages around 165 over 100, and is usually between 170 over 110 and 160 over 90? So you might say that this is a stable process and it's very predictable, but you would also say that this is an unacceptable range for blood pressure. Your job is to decide if the output of the process is acceptable. Now we're going to talk about variation within a process and types of causal systems. Now what I'd like for you to do is to take one sheet of clean paper and I want you to write the letter A eight times on the piece of paper. As you look at how you wrote the letter, you'll notice that there's variation. So how are these letters different and what might account for the differences? This is known as common cause variation. It's inherent in the process, it's always present, and it's produced by the interactions of the variables in the process, how you hold the pen, for example, the pressure of the pen on the paper. Now I want you to continue the exercise, but this time 
I would like for you to write the letter A twice, then switch hands and write the letter A four times and then switch hands again and write the letter A twice again. So what you might see is that there's more variation this time because you were switching hands to a dominant hand to a hand that doesn't write as well. And white might account for the differences. It's because you weren't using the same hand to write the letters. So this would be special cause variation. It's likely from an extraneous cause. It's superimposed on the common cause variation. The variation source is most identifiable, for example, using a different hand, it's easy to see it once you start to study the potential causes of the variation. If you're able to recognize the source of the variation, you'll be able to think about improvements to the process. The whole purpose in starting to understand variation and causes of variation is so that you can reduce variation in a process over time. So for common cause variation, it's about changing or redesigning the process. Your goal here is to lead to an increase in process capability. Special cause variation is about fixing or eliminating causes. This will also lead to stability in process. Variation is often misunderstood. Special cause variation is seen as common cause variation, and common cause variation is seen as special cause variation, which leads to tampering of the system. I'd like to provide another example. So let's say the emergency department wants to reduce the time it takes to get results back from the lab. So there are different ways that we can look at this data. One way is to use descriptive statistics. So our data shows that the reporting period was July 2011. The number of samples received from the ED were 150. The mean turnaround time and the standard deviation was 45 minutes, standard deviation of 14.1. The median time was 33 minutes, and it ranged from 9 to 95 minutes. So if you look at this data, and this would not be an uncommon way for us to receive a data report, what would you start to think about as an improvement? Another way we could look at the data would be to look at a histogram of the data. This is the same data, but presented using the histogram. And a third way that I would like for us to consider is a run chart, where we are going to plot the data sequentially over time. We're going to identify the central measure using either the mean or the median. And this will help us identify trends over time, shifts, and variation. So this is what it looks like when we plot our data over time. This gives us a very different look at our data than using descriptive statistics or the histogram. Now, and what would you see if you actually looked at the data on a weekly basis? You might see that the turnaround times are higher on the weekends. So that helps us start to identify some potential areas for improvement for reducing turnaround times for our, our lab test. Here's another example. Let's say we look at infection rate in surgical ward two. So there were four cases of infection in the first quarter of 2011. The mean infection rate is 3.2 cases per quarter. The same quarter last year for Ward 2 had 2.8 cases per quarter. And as I said, we have four cases in this quarter. So it looks like perhaps our infection rate is increasing. So what would you do? Let's say we look at our data over time again. First quarter of 2010 through second quarter of 2011, the mean of the data is 3.2. You see that it varies around the mean, as you would expect. We see our one point that we're interested in here. So what can we determine about this data? Does it help us to look at the data this way? What if we were to put control limits on the data? What can we conclude now? You see that with the upper control limit of 4.2 and a lower control limit of 2.2, our process is in control. We can predict that the rate of surgical infections is going to vary between 4.2 and 2.2 per quarter. So presenting our data using a run chart or control chart is a very helpful way to start to better understand the processes that we want to study and that we want to improve. We always have a variable x that we look at over time to create a run chart. Using the data, we calculate a center line. A control chart is quite similar. It starts just like a run chart with a variable and then looking at data over time with a center measurement and then with an upper control limit and a lower control limit that are created from the data. In summary, variation over time is intrinsic to all healthcare and other work processes. Understanding that variation can help monitor, adjust, and improve processes. Studying variation can help predict the future performance of a stable process, and studying variation with control charts can offer insights about possible causes of that variation and offer clues to the design of change. Part two of the presentation is going to talk about how to construct run charts and control charts. Mm -hmm.